So we'll go over the D2 trade on EURUSD now. Before we get into this, I want to preface the whole analysis here with a couple of things. First, this is my second trade of the week. The trade that I took on Monday on GBP NZD was a D1 entry. That's very similar to our A1 entry where it's an in-trend trade. And that's where I feel more comfortable, just being honest. The D2 trades, which are tested and they're a part of our ASFX systems, that's one of the three systems. The D2 is just something that I'm not as comfortable with. At least I wasn't in the past, but I'm getting more comfortable by pushing myself as much as I can to do markups on it, to trade it when I see it, and to get out of my comfort zone, which is to trade counter trend if that's what the market is telling me is going on. So I've been, like I said, spending a lot of time studying the D2 more, marking it up more, trying to find more nuances within the system that can help me feel more confident. So when I flip over the screen here and I show you guys my analysis, you'll see this D2 setup can present in many different ways. You can use just the 15 minute, you can use the 15 minute and the one minute. It can be found in really any time frame. but where I find my best D2 two trades, the one that I'm doing the most markups on, the ones that I'm most confident in, are gonna look just like this Euro USD trade. And that's because what you're gonna see is we aren't just trading a break of an EMA or a divergence setup. We're waiting for price action to actually give us short-term structure that signals the reversal. The only other thing I wanna mention before we get into the chart here is that right now, as we film this, it's 841. News just came out 10 minutes ago at 8.30 for the US dollar. It was a high impact news event. I'll show you on Forex Factory. The only reason that I held the trade into that news event is because I already had 50% of it closed from when I took the position at 6 a.m. And I was able to lock my stop loss. So if the news event was crazy volatile against me, I would get stopped in profit and I wouldn't lose any money. That's the only time that I would recommend holding into high impact news events. So if you take a look at the screen, you can see I have two positions today, 117.95 and 117.93. With my inching myself into these D2 trades, I'm trading them very small as a percentage of risk of my overall account. And even here, you can see I split that small percentage risk between two entries. I wanted to be sure that it was actually moving up. And you'll see that on the one minute where I added the two positions. But first, I want to just show you the entry at 95. I closed that at 118.13. That was about half the trade right there. Took profit, locked the stop when that happened. And now as it's been moving higher here in this news event, I closed more of the trade here at 118.26. So if you look over at the chart really quick, I'll show you. We can drag this down. The 13 price that I got out at was right here. You can see 118.14 right above my head. 118.14 is very close to my exit at 118.13. The reason I took 50% there is because the 200 EMA is an EMA in our way, and I know it can be a significant support level that it could hold to see this then come back down lower today. So I want to make sure that I'm taking profit whenever we reach EMAs, when I'm trading against them like this in a D2 setup. Now, if we go backwards, you'll see the D2 itself is set up with the bullish divergence here on the bottom from yesterday at 9 a.m. That RSI low is rising into the price action low, which is down here as price is falling. Now, you want to always make sure you're drawing it with the bodies. Sometimes I'm a little sloppy. That's why that wasn't right there. But it's always with the bodies of the candles, not the wicks. That divergence sets up the low. That low is then tested here at, what's that, about 10 p.m.? Eastern Standard Time last night in the Asian session, tested and held. So now we know that 117.72 is our bottom. Overnight, it moves higher, slightly, sets the Asia high here at 117.84 and breaks the 50 EMA for the first time here, right outside the Asian session. That first break of the 50 EMA, when we have divergence like this against the trend, the, di the trend is down from yesterday's news. The divergence is bullish against that downward trend. So this 50 EMA break first, as soon as that happens, that tells me that this has the potential to rise to the 200 because we have the divergence in play and the 50 EMA is back tested as a level that when it's broken, it's a change of bias. Now that, like I said, doesn't mean we just jump in there and buy it to watch it rise. You want to see price action create structure so we know where our risk point should be. You can't take the trade unless you know where your risk should go. Now, as the morning went on, by the time I was awake, this was just breaking back through the 50 EMA. So before it broke through the 50 here with this 545 to 6 a.m. bar, you could be thinking, hey, market sentiment is bearish today. This could hold the 50 EMA and come lower. That's the right mindset. But you want to be aware of the fact that if it gets above the 50, anytime it's above the 50 with this divergence in play, it's not a good place to be short. 
it would only make sense to be shorting it if it was below the 50. So once it breaks back above, that feeds the bias even more to see it rise towards the 200, okay? Notice also I have the Asia high blocked off. That Asia high was resistance overnight that is broken and then confirmed twice as support. So even more confirmation to see it hold that level here at 117.83, 84, where my stop loss was, to then see it rise from the entry at 117.93. That was where my entry was. If you look again here, you'll see entry at 93, 95, right? So it's about a 10 pip stop with about 20 pips to that 200 EMA. So two to one, that fits the bill for a great ASFX trade. A1, D1, or D2, they've all been tested looking for 2R in the best trades. So that's what we had on the 15 minute. Now, the last part of the 15 minute analysis that you have to see is notice the 8 and 21 EMAs cross up after being crossed down when it was under the 50. We call that a shift. When the 8 and 21 crosses, it's a shift. There's, the short term trend has shifted. Now, with the 8 above the 21, we look for it to hold that 8 EMA and continue up to the 200 EMA at least. With a full reset D2, we call it full reset. It would rise to the 800 EMA up here, which would be also near its ADR level. Now that it's through the 200, it could definitely do that today, which is why I'm still holding a piece of this trade with my stop loss locked. But let's go back to the one minute now, okay? I'm going to pull up the one minute on the left side. From when I took the position, now there was no bullish divergence on the one minute. You don't need that. It helps, but you don't need it. Once I took the position, look at where market sentiment was in the buy zone here at a 56 value. This yellow line is market sentiment, right? Notice how market sentiment holds the buy zone through this entire move into the news, telling me that they're on the shortest time frame that I can look at, the one minute, the sentiment says buyers are in control going into the news. Regardless of whether the news comes out as it's supposed to, the news actually came out greater than forecast. You can see 1% versus forecasted 0.6%. That's supposed to be, it says actual greater than forecast is good for the currency. If it's good for the dollar, you would normally see DXY go up and Euro USD come down. But going into the news, sentiment told us otherwise. Sentiment said this is going to continue to rise regardless of the news. So I always lean towards the technicals versus the fundamentals, especially because it's a PPI news event. The It's, um, what's it called? Producer price index versus yesterday we had the consumer price index, which is better of a gauge of inflation. So that consumer price index news yesterday, if you look at Euro USD yesterday, Big news yesterday, big move down on that news. Today's news event, just I know what the news events are through experience. It's not as impactful. So that was why it didn't scare me to take the trade two hours before the news. And that's why I made sure I took profit before the news at 118.13 right here. Like you saw, I'll show you the PL again. 118.13, 118.13 right here on the one minute, right under the 200 EMA on the 15 minute. Take profit there, lock the stop right here at 117.96. Even if this news was to shoot down, I get stopped in profit with the rest of the trade and I move on. But if it wants to hold and continue higher, now I'm in a position to do so and just take profit at 3R, at 4R, at 5R, and just keep piecing my way out of the trade until at some point I'm either full out or it stops me out in profit. That's the way that I, most of my trades end up. Is I'm stopped in profit with the remaining piece or I piece myself out to where it's so small that it doesn't even matter at each R multiple. And that's all I've been looking at. Watching market sentiment hold the buy zone, that told me that this on the 15 minute should hold the 8 EMA. On the 15 minute, through your management of these trades, D1, D2, A1, it doesn't matter. If you're trading a system, especially an ASFX entry, A1, D1, D2, watch that 8 EMA. Candle by candle. Don't make decisions mid-candle. And if you want to watch the one minute, watch the market sentiment line. I wouldn't watch one minute price action. That's just too much noise. And that's basically it, everybody. That's as simple as it is. And then the only other thing you should look at is on my watch list today, Euro JPY was also setting up with the divergent bottom as a D2. But here, your risk reward to the 200 EMA was only 1.1R. On Euro USD, like I showed you, it was 2R to that 200 EMA. So it's better risk reward. And also, the divergence yesterday on Euro USD hit oversold. So it's like a little bit more significant to me versus here on Euro JPY, it does not hit oversold yesterday. So I didn't like Euro JPY as much as I liked Euro USD. And that's where I felt the money was this morning. And it ends up working out really nicely for me. Um, yeah. Any questions about it?